Coach Krimmel, thank you so much for coming on the Christian Coach Podcast. We like our first question to always be, what does it mean to you to be a Christian coach? St. Francis, um, our school, and, and who we're named after, uh, obviously. You know, I, I think the, the best way that, that I could describe it is a, a saying that's attributed to him. You know, preach the gospel, and when necessary, use words. Um, I think the, the line of work, work that we're in, our actions, and we're working with kids that are still so very impressionable, and that it's one thing to talk, and it's one thing to read, and it's one thing to, I think, verbalize, you know, what Christianity is. I think the actions, you know, for me, especially as a father and as a coach, are more important. And, and one of the things, too, that I've tried to embrace as I get older and I get more experience and I'm around more people is the spiritual component. You know, our team is made up of more than just Christians. And, and I know that we're going to get into my story here a little bit, but that spiritual component and, you know, understanding, you know, the faiths and the, and, and the religions of people that are under my care. And, uh, you know, so becoming that Christian coach and again, using St. Francis who went over and met with the Sultan and tried to bridge the gap between Christianity, Christianity and, you know, and, and Muslims. And, you know, so those examples, I think that obviously Jesus and you know, people like St. Francis and trying to you know, be, be more like them in their word, but most importantly in their actions. Yeah. Thank you for, for sharing that. It, it's true. I think our, our actions do speak much louder than our words. Um, and, and it's, it's great to be in a position where we, it's, it's incredible to have that position, but at the same time, there's great responsibility, you know, um, let, let's go back to young um, Rob. Um, did you always wanted to be a, 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 a basketball coach or did you have other dreams growing up? I had very different dreams and aspirations and I won't go all the way back to third grade wanting to be an architect to where I am now. But, you know, it, it, it kind of happened in a very weird set of circumstances, but very similar to what my father went through. Um, you know, I graduated from college and Everybody, every, every athlete, every basketball player thinks they're going to play professionally, right? And uh, you know, as my college career went on, I, I realized that at some point, you know, basketball was going to be over. And I still vividly remember my last college game. And um, my grand plan was to, you know, be a teacher for a little bit. My, part of my degree was in history and education. And then save up a little bit of money and go to law school after that and come back and be a solicitor for a school district. School law and, and student rights were big when I was in college. And that was something that interested me. And Part of my undergrad was in, in pre-law. And so that was my grand plan. And um, as, as we all know, the, the good Lord has a different plan for us. And we, we come to realize those plans pretty quickly and was given the opportunity to coach as soon as I was done playing. And uh, I'm starting my 25th year in Loretto, Pennsylvania as a player, as an assistant, and now as a head coach. And uh, it's certainly not the path I was planning. Um, and, and, and as I started out, I really didn't think I wanted to be a head basketball coach. And uh, my dad coached in college. He was a swimming coach for 26 years and coached was a head coach for 19. And I think just being up, being around that and growing, I think kind of subliminal messages were, you're going to be a coach, you're going to be a coach. And here I am, you know, 10 years later, we were, I'm starting my 10th year as a head coach and really didn't set out wanting to do this. And um, you know, certainly a lot of experiences along the way, but going back all the way from my first, I think, dream of being an architect to where I am now and a lot of, you know, businessman, you know, educator, uh, law student, all of those things that were a part of my journey and wanting to think, be that person. And now I'm, uh, now I'm a coach. Yeah. My, my dad always wanted me to be a doctor. He, he was an engineer and he had, um, I'm originally from Brazil. Um, and he had his bottle of, uh, whiskey that he's never opened it. And he said he was only going to open it when I got my doctorate degree, you know? <laughs> So I was like, that's not going to happen. That one's going to sit in that shelf forever, you know? <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so it, it's, um, I always wanted to be a PE teacher because I wanted to be in shorts and t-shirts all day. Hey, um, and, and that was my motivation. And then in college, I started looking and I'm like, well, I went to college to get PE degree and be a teacher. And I, I started being, a, I, I graduated and got a, a GA position here at Liberty. And that first year right away, I was like, wow, this is just like PE, you know, I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. They give me the free shorts and a t-shirt. They give me food. They make me travel. They force me to travel around the country. Um, 
and I only have to take care of 10, 12 players instead of 500 kids. And I was like, I think this is probably a little better. I think God is trying to tell me something here. <laughs> Good deal. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, what, what was your growing up like? Um, mm -hmm. And how did that influence you now to, to become a coach now for so many years? Yeah, I mean, it's, as I mentioned, my dad was a coach and my mom was a, was a high level athlete, you know, and played sports in college. And, you know, I was always around athletics and then I grew up in a coaching family. And, um, you know, uh, even though it was swimming and we had to swim growing up and, you know, we, you know, soccer and baseball and track and you know, all of, we played all of the sports growing up. And so it was a big part of, of what we did. And, did you uh, have siblings? <laughs> Do you have I did. I two younger okay. brothers, two okay. younger brothers. Yep. So there were a lot of uh, uh, loud moments in our, in our driveways <laughs> and uh, competitive moments in our backyards. And, you know, so it was, it was nice to have that, you know, share that with, with, with my two brothers and, and obviously a family that, you know, in our free time, we'd go to a baseball game or, um, you know, <laughs> go to go to our, one of our siblings, one of my brothers, you know, soccer games or whatever it was. So a lot of our enter entertainment was, uh, was around sport. And I grew up in state college, which is where Penn state is. And, and it's so every other Saturday in the fall, I'm going to Penn State football games. And then in the winter, I'm up the rec hall watching Penn State basketball games. My dad's a swimming coach. The baseball field was right down the street. Good friends with the soccer coach. So, you know, there, there was a lot of, um, you know, sport around me. And it was like I said, it was kind of that you know, you, I didn't think I was going in that direction. I had aspirations to do something else. But again, as you mentioned, I think God was telling me, yeah, yeah, hold on a second here. You know, you might have this plan, but I think you might be a little better served in this area and certainly followed his lead. And, and here I am today. Yeah. Um, how was it? Obviously, I, I don't have any siblings, but how was it having two younger siblings? And they're probably trying to take your post as the older sibling and trying to challenge you athletically, you know, um, and did that teach you anything now uh, then that, that you use now to, to help you be a better coach? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of those, those moments as an older brother, it, it, I don't know if it's an older brother you know, symptom or syndrome or whatever you want to call it, that you feel like you got to set the standard for the family, right? You know, and you feel like you got to be the person that you have two younger brothers and you want to make sure that their experience is as good as yours. And um, my middle brother, um, we played together. Uh, he was, he was two years behind me. My younger brother, is five years. So we never really crossed that yeah. now in the backyard and playing wiffle ball and pick up. I mean, stuff like that was, but my middle brother and I kind of marched uh, a, a similar path because when I was playing, he'd get to play up with me. And you know, so those experiences of making sure I took care of my younger brother and, uh, and from a, from a coaching perspective. Now I, I see myself and as a father, you know, trying to help my, my, my oldest son understand what his role is and, taking care of his younger brother. We were at a, a school trip at a, at, a, at a local amusement park uh, yesterday. And, and I, had to, I had to travel to Pittsburgh to meet uh, uh, an alum with our, our director of athletics. And he was gonna be in the park with supervision. The teachers were all there, but my wife was on her way from work. So it was gonna be the first time where there wasn't mom or dad there. And I said, listen, you know, you gotta be, you gotta watch out for your younger brother. And, you know, so, so as a father now I'm using those experiences. And then as a coach, when you talk about you know, your captains and when you have freshmen coming in and you're a senior, a junior, you're the captain on how you've got to set the standard. And, and a little bit like we, we opened up, John Carlo, with, you know, leading by example in, in your actions. And then also being very careful about, you know, the, the words you use, because we all we, we know that the tongue can be a very powerful um, resource, both good and bad. You know, you can use a few words that can really hurt somebody, you know, and you don't even realize it. So understanding how to and then, listen, we all make mistakes. Yeah. But you know, I, I, there's also that that that, that older brothers. You know, I got to make sure that the younger or the people below me is is in age, they, not not in step, but in age. That hey, I'm making sure that I'm doing my part to get them to where they want to go. Makes yeah, make, <laughs> make, makes a lot of sense. Um, my next question is: I, I looked at your roster, and it looks like your assistants um, have been with you. Uh, you know, longer than most, you know, college coaches, you're always moving and changing and things. And you have coaches that have been with you for longer than five years. I think two or three of them have been with you longer than five years, at least. Um, what are some of the keys as the head coach um, to find guys or girls that, that will stick with you because that promotes consistency and trust in the players? Um, what are some of the things that you're looking for um, in, in those coaches? 
I, the, the, the type of people they are. When you look at our, the makeup of our staff too, is a lot of them are St. Francis graduates. And um, one of them I played with, and, and Eric, Eric has been with me all 10 years, and we played together um, okay. back in the late 90s. So, you know, there was a connection there. And then one of our other assistants um, was a senior my first year as a head coach. Our director of operations, his dad was my college coach, and our associate head coach was the coach that recruited me to come to St. Francis. You know, and two of our GAs are going to be St. Francis guys that played for us. And, and I think so much of, you know, so much of that is, you know, when you look at it, it, your, your, your program or your business, so much of it is about it, right? And, and when we go out and recruit, understanding what does it mean to be a successful St. Francis student athlete? And I'm not talking about scoring points and, you know, playing 40 minutes, but what does it mean when you walk across that stage and have, you know, four years of, of an experience? And, you know, th those, those are things that I know when we go into houses and recruit and talk to parents, those guys can sell because they lived it. And, and they, they, they lived it very differently, differently than me. But the one common thread was we love St. Francis. You know, Eric's from Cincinnati and Umar's from Atlantic City and I'm from State College. And, you know, so we kind of you know, grew up in very different parts, but we fell in love with St. Francis. And, you know, when you look at, you know, the, the character of someone, there are a lot of great X's and O's people, right? There are a lot of people that can recruit, you know, and I, across all sports. Yeah. When, when it gets down to it, I don't want a, a thousand Rob Crimmels running around, but when you break down outside of the basketball component, each one of these men are great people. They're great fathers. They're great husbands. You know, they're great sons. And, and those, that, that's what I want our guys to aspire to be. We want to recruit great basketball players, and we want them to leave here as all-time greats. And we want them, want them to reach their highest level that they've ever been at. But we want them to leave here as even better people. And, and again, kind of goes back to what I started, having, having men in our program to lead by example. And to show them what it means to be a great father and a great husband or, you know, a great son or a great assistant coach. And, and not just from an X and O standpoint, but from a, hey, listen, I, I'm a man and we have, and we have the great thing. We have Catholics, Protestants, and Muslims on our staff. And we have some, you know, wide range of experiences. You know, I, I grew up in a Methodist house and converted to Catholicism. You know, our director of operations grew up in a very Catholic house and, 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 and my former head coach guy I played for was very a devout Catholic, you know, and, and have assistant coaches that have a different level of spirituality. So as we expect them to have a spiritual experience here at St. Francis, I have the luxury of having different different faiths and different levels of commitment to where they are with their relationship with the Lord. And, um, you know, those, those are things that help, as you know, when the athletes go through that tough time. And, and I don't know one college student athlete that hasn't experienced some bump in the road or some challenge. Some are on the court, some are in the classroom, some are in life, some are in all of those areas. And, and, and to have people that have been through those experiences, you know, not, not that they have to handle it the way I did or the way one of the assistant coaches did, but that they can sit there and listen and help guide them through what you know, can be sometimes a very tumultuous experience. Those four years of college tend to be, you know, very up and down, and especially for these kids right now. I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, get into all the stuff that's going on, you know, with, whether it be the pandemic or some of the stuff that's going on, you know, in the, you know, socially or, you know, all the stresses that they're feeling with having to change, you know, who they are in terms of the college experience. You know, I think having people that will, will listen and people that are humble, people that have a spirit to them, those are the ones that, you know, when you look at developing a relationship, and that's what we want to be great at. We want to develop relationships with our kids. And when we started this thing 10 years ago, John Carlo, that was the number one goal. We want to be the best at developing relationships, but not just with the player and the coach, but teaching them how to develop relationships with their professors, with the people in the dining hall. And, you know, it's part of our recruiting philosophy. And it comes from a friend of mine who's, you know, is on the board of trustees, but he introduced me to a study. And we were doing it kind of unknowingly, but trying to get these guys to have different points of contact while they're here on campus and not just basketball or not just their sport, because those are the kids that, that when they leave here, they really don't have a connection to the, to the sport or to the institution or to the coaching staff. We want them to have an experience here. And then and, and the best, the, the kids that have had the most success, not just points and rebounds, they've had different points of contact. Some of them spiritual, some of them with their, their, their professors, some of them with the, the people in the dining hall, with their teammates, with their coaches, with people from other sports, because those are the kids then that have a connection to the institution to the program and you know the big elephant in the room in the world of basketball is the, the whole transfer portal and yeah it's, for me college is a four-year experience and you know and my father used to say hey I don't want 
I want college to be the best four years of your life, but I don't want it to be the best four years of your life. You know, for me, the last four years were pretty good. I think they were better than my college years. But when you have four great years at a college, I'll set you up for the next four and the next four and the next four and the next four. And, and I, it all comes down to developing those relationships. And as coaches, helping them, you know, with different points of contact and building those relationships. And here in a place like St. Francis, spirituality, you know, it's something that we can, you know, we can talk about and work on and, and, and help these kids figure out where they are on that spectrum, you know, and, and help get them to understand that, you know, a lot of times in life, you know, you're going to go through some tough times and who can you turn to? Some of it is human. Some of it is a face-to-face -face interaction. Some of it is that, that relational aspect. But, you know, for me, it's, it's becoming more and more and teaching these guys how to have that conversation with and develop that relationship with God and, and, and in terms of Christianity. And then also, you know, having young men that, that, that are Catholic and Protestant, you know, that are Muslim and, and you know, we have a, a young man who's, whose family is Jewish, you know, so that to me is something that Francis embraced. And why not embrace what the namesake of our school did? So yeah. kind of a long-winded answer to your, your question. No, that, that was great. I, I just think it's, you know, it, it's so important right now to have coaches that believe in the institution, that word behind you, believe, but, you know, that, that, that have a passion for developing great young men. Yeah, no, I appreciate the passion in that answer. I think it's uh, refreshing, you know, to 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 hear and um, to to see here the 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 that there's something behind the, the success, you know, and, and success, we shouldn't be measuring success by the wins and losses that we have every year. It should be by the impact we have on the lives of our, of our players and our staff. Um, you, you mentioned a little bit of the pandemic. Our, did, did you last year and a little bit of this year also, but was there anything that got taught you through that pandemic um, that, that now you're going to, learn and use it now moving forward without this pandemic hopefully <laughs> have faith you know I'm, i think you know you read you, know, you, you read the bible and you see you know throughout history there's been a lot of struggle and and i think that's one of the you know one of the lessons i learned that just because you're a christian um doesn't mean that you're not going to struggle you know th there's going to be challenges right it's kind of the same thing like if you work hard there's no guarantee that you're going to be the starting you know, running back or starting, you know, point guard or anything, right? You know, so I think that consistency and that, you know, that 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 ability to remain um, faithful, remain um, strong in my relationship and become stronger in that relationship, and uh, it, it did lend a perspective that, that that you know, being able to, and I used, I think God made us hit the pause button. I really do. I think you know. I, I think he had not just a pause button, but a reset button. And, and I said that yeah. early on that it helped reset me a little bit. I got to spend more time with my family last year than I had in my previous, uh, you know, 18 years of coaching or whatever, you know, 20, 20 some years ago, right. You know, and, 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 and it forced me to say, Hey, listen, you know, this is, this is great. Do I want to be able to play basketball and compete just like we did before Yes. Do I don't, I don't know, you know, the masking and the testing and all of the things. Yes. But what it did is it, you know, I had more time at Christmas than I had ever had with my family. And so it gave me a chance to really sit back and say, Hey, I'm a dad, not, you know, and I've always told, I've always told the recruits and people don't judge me as a coach, judge me as a father. Right. And I had a chance to really jump two feet into that where some years you're, you know, <laughs> you're straddle on the fence because you've got 18 guys in the locker room and I got two kids at home. And by the time I get home, I'm so exhausted with the 18 kids that my two kids are, you know, they take a, I just, yeah. it was a chance for me to reset and say, okay, you want to be a great dad, go be a great dad. I learned to fish. I never fished before, John Carl. I, you know, I was a farthest thing from an outdoorsman, but my kids fell in love with it. We fished more last year than we, than I had in my entire 43 years, right? I learned to garden. I, I, could, I couldn't garden to save my life. My kids love that now. You know, we plant, I built three gardens, you know, just those that I wouldn't have done without the yeah. pandemic. So that, that, that willingness, I think, to improve myself as a father and as a person and, and the, the, the need to do that. And then also just hitting that reset button, you know, and, and kind of getting you know, refocused on, you know, how I can be a better Christian coach and how I can be a better leader of, of our, of our program and, you know, step out in front a little bit more and not just kind of be that basketball coach, but be the best father for my two kids and, you know, and be the best coach for those 18 guys in the locker room and be the best leader for those assistant coaches and just a chance to reflect and kind of get back on that path. Yeah. I, I, I went through the same thing. We, when uh, go, go bear got tested positive and NBA shut down and then the whole country world shut down right next day. 
uh, we were in Hawaii playing tennis matches and, and there's threaten of the airport getting, uh, getting shut down and we're going to get stuck in Hawaii. I'm calling my wife. I'm like, Hey honey, there's a possibility that I'm going to get stuck here. She's like, heck no, you're taking, you're, you're swimming back. If you have to, like, you're not going to get stuck in Hawaii. Um, but we don't, we end up not getting stuck there, but we, we make it back, but then school shut down and, I have my routines. I'm a routine guy. I have my morning routine. I exercise. I do, and then I can't do any of that because my wife works in a hospital and now I have to take care of two young kids. And I got so angry and bitter, you know, yeah. it's like, geez, my life was perfect. I was literally in Hawaii, you know, like, <laughs> and, and now everything is shut down. I can't go anywhere. And that, that made me so angry and bitter. And, and then I felt like God, you know, kind of slapped me in the face and said, Hey, just pay attention like this. This is probably not going to happen again in your lifetime. Enjoy this moment, you know? And then I think when when you said that, that was what we try to teach our guys. You know, I hope I never have the playbook of the pandemic again. I hope I never have to use it. But one of the things that we, we talked to our guys about this year is that, and for me too, it was a lesson, a lesson in patience. It was a lesson, lesson in perseverance. It was a lesson in discipline, you know, being able to do certain things that you don't necessarily want to do, but you know, you have to do them in order to play a basketball game and the patience of no one really had any answers. You know, <laughs> why are we testing this way? Why are we not? When are we testing? Who's positive? Who's negative? You know, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, you know, but that, that, that patience of just, okay, like it's, it's one day at a time. And, you know, and those are lessons that, I think you can use, even if it's not a pandemic, right? You know, things that can happen, you know, that, that, that whole idea of, you know, being disciplined, disciplined, being able to persevere when things just aren't right, you know, and, um, you know, when the rest of the world says you shouldn't do it this way, or you have friends that are going one way, you know, just, I think those three things, you know, are lessons that we tried to impart on our guys. But I think kind of looking in the mirror, those are things that as coaches, we needed to do too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, Coach Grimo, thank you so much for taking the time to, to be here. Um, we like to end with prayer. How can we be praying for you? I think the, the, for me, the, the biggest thing is we're, we're coming back to having our guys on campus for the first time. Last summer, they didn't have a summer. Yeah. You know, and so all of these guys, you know, some of our freshmen, our freshmen never experienced a summer. And as they come back to still a lot of unknowns, I, the, 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 I think the big thing, and I just mentioned it, you know, is to continue to pray for patience. <laughs> and discipline and perseverance, you know, and, and, and giving, you know, the, the good Lord to give me the strength to help these guys, you know, take that next step as we move forward out of the pandemic and how we can all grow and be, you know, be better from it. And so those, those lessons that we, we learned to be able to continue those, but how can we come out stronger and be better, you know, better people, better Christians, you know, better men of faith and, you know, put ourselves in a position to obviously win as many games as possible, right? You know, we're, we're competitors, right? We want to win and we want to do those things but not at the expense of developing great people. Yeah. All right. Let, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this time together, this conversation. Thank you for Coach Krimmel and in his ministry there at St. Francis um, with the staff and his players and coworkers and family. Lord, I pray that you continue to work on all of our patience and all of our steadfastness and, and discipline to continue to seek you first and foremost, Lord. Um, fully knowing that all the, the rest will be added to that. Um, and Lord, uh, thank you that um, Krimo is in a position where he can influence young men um, for your glory and for your kingdom and, and disciple them for four years in, in a way that is uh, worthy and glorifying to you, Lord. Thank you for this conversation once more. In your name I pray. Amen. Coach, my, my last question is, how do you handle the different levels of faith within your program one day at a time and one kid at a time um and, and, and i go back to my experience like i said when i came to saint francis i wasn't catholic i grew up in a, in a protestant methodist home we were i mean we, every church every you know every sunday youth group choir acolytes you know doing things with the methodist and so i came to a catholic small catholic and i was a little intimidated but my but my college coach i remember going to mass with him and you know, not worrying about when to stand up or sit down or kneel. You know, I'm a little, oh my gosh. I remember going to my religion professor. We had to take a, you know, religious studies, faith in Franciscan. And I went up to him. He's a priest, Father, uh, you know, Father Pat, God rest his soul. And I said, Father Pat, like, 
I don't know. And I'm a conscientious student. Like I'm worried I'm going to fail this class because I don't know about Catholicism. And I'm giving you this backstory as to how I handle each kid. And he looked at me and said, oh my gosh, Rob, you don't. And I said, Rob, it's, it's okay. You're probably one of 15 people that aren't Catholic in here that have no clue. And so, yeah. you know, I think that that understanding that not everybody is kind of walking through this thing at the same speed, right, John yeah. and Carlo, that yeah. everybody is, and I would never want to force it on somebody. You know, when you're ready, let's talk. It's something that I openly talk about. And I know the coaches talk about but not, not at the expense of making somebody feel uncomfortable, right? You know, and I have to walk that fine line because like I said, we have some, you know, some, we have, we have Catholics and Protestants, we have, you know, Muslims and Jews, and, you know, we have people of different, and, and they're all different, you know, spots in their spiritual journey. So I got to make sure I service them too, right? And, and provide opportunity for them to grow in their faith. And, and that's a little bit of a balancing act, but it goes back to what we talked about, those relationships, how important, getting to know how important that faith is to that person. And as you build those relationships, I, I tell, tell recruits all the time, my relationship with my junior, my freshmen and my seniors are very different. It's not that I love my seniors more than I love the freshmen. It's just that there's more shared experience with those seniors, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. we've been through more. So I know if I've done my job, I know that how important spirituality of their faith and, you know, yeah. wanting to be a better Christian. I know how important that is. And, you know, yeah. and, and that's, that's part of the fun four year process. Now that doesn't happen in four months. It doesn't happen in one year. It's four years. That's, that's when you get to know it. So each kid is unique. And as I develop those relationships with those kids, you find out how important the, the spiritual component is. And we seek that out. We want to make sure that we service them and give them those opportunities to grow in their faith. For sure. Yeah. I, I tell my girls all the time, I will not treat all of you the same. That would be doing a disservice to all of you. If I treat you all the same, you know, and it's, you know, and, and with it's, it's been, I think giving the heads up beforehand, uh, it prepares them for, okay, you know, it's, it's different. I have, you, you can't have the same relationship you have with one sibling with the other sibling. It's different. You have shared experiences that, that shape their relationship. And so yep. it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been enlightening to them to know, Hey, the reason why he does this is because, you know, he actually cares about us because we could treat yep. them like robots and just tell them the same things. And it doesn't matter if it, if it, you know, if it applies to their lives or not. Um, and so it's, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time um, to come on and um, we'll, um, we'll post, we'll, we'll let you know when we post these um, right. and um, we'll tag you on social media, tag the team and everybody else. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you having me on. It's, it's a great opportunity to talk about something I'm, you know, I'm passionate about. And thank you for the work you're doing, you yeah. know, and giving people the platform to, to learn from each other and, and, and continue to grow in their, in their faith and in their journey. And uh, uh, the, the, the opportunity and the platform that you guys are putting out there is, uh, is something that I think a lot of people need. You know, yeah. it's, 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 they need to hear it. Not, not, not what I'm, but just to hear each other talk about our, our experiences and, and uh, lean on each other at times when we need uh need a guiding hand or maybe uh, an ear or maybe a, a, a piece of information that can help us grow in our journey. And I'm for sure. grateful for those people that have done that for me. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you, coach. Good luck this season. Thank you. All right, bye.